I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering and today in continuation of my last lecture, uh, today we shall solve another problem from this steam power cycle. So, the problem that we are going to solve today is on the ideal reheat Rankine cycle. So, let us first read out the problem, then we will discuss the solution procedure. It is given that a steam power plant that operates on an ideal reheat Rankine cycle between the specified pressure limits, the pressure at which reheating takes place, the total rate of heat input to the in input in the boiler and the thermal efficiency of the cycle are to be determined. Given that boiler is working at 15 mega Pascal, condenser pressure is 10 kilo Pascal and intermediate reheating pressure is 2.15 mega Pascal and it is given steam temperature at the exit of the boiler is 500 degree Celsius. So, given this data set, we need to calculate the heat input to the in, in the boiler. So, I am underlining the you know question the uh, quantities which we need to calculate. One is heat input to the, so this is heat input in the boiler, thermal efficiency of the cycle this 2. So, if we start solving this problem from here, it is given that ideal reheat Rankine cycle, right. So, if we try to revisit what we have discussed, reheat Rankine cycle is the modification of the Rankine cycle, because we have seen that uh, even after having several modifications like increasing the boiler pressure, reducing the condenser pressure and superheating steam beyond the saturated uh, vapor state. I mean all these modifications are considered essentially for the increase in the thermal efficiency of the system, but we have also discussed about several you know demerits associated with these modifications. And out of these three important modifications, we could discuss superheating steam beyond point 3 that is the state point at the inlet to the turbine. If we can superheat this steam, efficiency can be increased. Efficiency will not increase at the cost of the you know input energy to the boiler, but at times we also can increase the quality of steam at the exit of the turbine. But the issue is you know that the metallurgical consideration of the blade of the uh, turbine. So, if a turbine blade material is uh, designed, I mean is uh, available, which can withstand such high temperature without inviting any operational issue like generation of thermal crack then a uh, superheating steam could be an ideal way of increasing the thermal efficiency of steam power plant. But it is because of this restriction, the concept of preheat Rankine cycle came into the picture and I am not going to dis discuss the detail of this, but let us first draw the
you know uh, schematic. So, this is you know cube in I am taking that uh, per unit mass flow of the working substance per unit mass flow rate of the working substance and then we have high pressure stress turbine and after it does work in the high pressure stress turbine steam is taken to the low pressure stress turbine and eventually we are getting W out. So, this is low pressure stress turbine. And finally, from the low pressure stress turbine steam is taken to the condenser wherein heat is rejected to the media which is circulated and then the collected condensate is pumped back to the boiler. So, this is the place wherein we need to give work energy input in the form of work. So, basically you know that uh, uh, this is what is the schematic depiction of the reheat Rankine cycle. Now, let us draw the T s plane because we have seen that if we can replace I mean if we can uh, map the processes if we can represent all the processes in T s plane then we can easily calculate the energy and heat I mean energy interaction either heat or work between system and the uh, surroundings. So, basically you know that this amount of heat is added to the boiler and at the cost of that input energy we are getting work output. So, this is not the network output because this is the work output we are getting from the turbine, but uh, we also need to give some input work to the pump for its operation for its you know uh, uh, operation. So, now so we have to understand that net work is W out minus W in and to obtain that net work we are supplying this amount of heat. So, from there we can calculate the efficiency. But only thing is uh, if we try to recall exactly what we have discussed in the context of this course that uh, we are we, we have applied steady flow energy equation. So, if uh, the steady state steady flow uh, equation applies to all the you know devices which are there we can see here that boiler high pressure stress turbine low pressure stress turbine condenser and pump then we can figure out the energy interaction between system and surroundings. So, basically uh, if it is a uh, work interacting device we can easily calculate the work either added or work extracted from the system in terms of the enthalpies. Similarly, if it is a uh, heat interacting device whether heat is added to the system or heat is rejected from the system in terms of the enthalpies. So, let us quickly draw the T s diagram that will help us to proceed further. So, if we try to draw the T s diagram. Okay. So, this is this is the condenser pressure. So, this is P condenser and so 
So, this is P boiler ok. Now, you know that uh, this is 1 to 2. So, this is point 1, this is point 2. So, let us give this is point 1, this is point 2. Then 2 to 3, so 3 is the inlet state, state at the exit of the boiler and so this is state point 3. Now, from 3 to it is given that you know that we have learned from previous discussion that you know steam is allowed to expand in the high pressure stress turbine up to an intermediate pressure and that pressure is given 2.15 mega Pascal. So, let us say this is the pressure and then it is again reheated you know so after doing some work steam is taken back to the boiler and it is allowed to pass through this heating coil, wherein again upon receiving heat it, it, it is heated and it is heated up to the temperature of the initial superheat. And then finally, it is, so this is 3 to 4, 4 to 5 and 6. So, this is the T s diagram. So, what we can see? One thing which is not given in the problem statement that is we are taking steam. So, we are what is what it is what is done here? Steam is allowed to go into the high pressure stress turbine after doing some work it is taken back to the boiler for further reheating and it is reheated at an intermediate pressure. So, basically you know when when steam is doing work in the high pressure stress turbine pressure will fall. So, this expansion is allowed up to an intermediate pressure that is 2.15 mega Pascal. So, that is P 4 equal to P 5 these two points are on the same pressure line. And so, basically this is 0 0.4 and this is 0 0.5 and this is 0 0.6 right. And you know that uh, it is steam is expanded up to state point 4 and then again upon receiving heat in the boiler it is in super it is heated reheated, but it is not given up to what temperature it is reheated. So, this is very important if nothing is given in the problem statement what we have learned? We have learned that usually steam is reheated up to the initial superheat temperature basically. So, you can understand 3 is the superheat temperature before it enters into the turbine. So, that reheating is continued until the temperature becomes equal to the initial superheat temperature that is T 3. So, that is very important T 3 equal to T 5 that is what we have learned from the reheat Rankine cycle right. If, if this reheating temperature is given that is good and that is well and good, but if it is not given then we have to assume that this reheating is done up to the initial superheat temperature that is T 3. And when it enters into the low pressure stress turbine it again you know expands isentropically up to the state point 6 and it does work and finally, you are getting you understand the turbine blades in both the high pressure stage and low pressure stage turbines are connected to a common shaft. So, from there we are getting work output. So, this is what is very important I think we have understood. Now, let us move to see the uh, calculation steps. So, you can understand easily we have from our previous uh, discussion as well as the problem we have solved in the last class point 1 is on the saturated liquid line and that is this is 10 kilo Pascal that is what is given. So, this is 10 kilo Pascal and this is 15 mega Pascal. So, if we go to the next slide P 1 equal to P 6 equal to 10 kilo Pascal and H 1 
equal to h f at 10 kilo Pascal and that you can easily get it from steam table. I am not going to show the steam table today because what you need to go? You need to go to the saturated water pressure table or temperature table. Let me tell you one thing, here pressure is given 10 kilo Pascal. So, we can easily calculate the enthalpy at state point 1 that is nothing but enthalpy of saturated liquid corresponding to 10 kilo Pascal. Instead of pressure, if temperature is given, then you also can calculate enthalpy at state point 1, which is saturated enthalpy corresponding to that temperature. So, this is very important that we can understand point 1 is on the saturated liquid line. So, we can easily calculate and that is 191.81 kilo joule per kg and also specific volume that is V f at 10 kilo Pascal and that is equal to 0. 00101 meter cube per kg. See, let me tell you, uh, though it is all the processes which I have tried to show in this TS plane are not drawn at per scale, but still if you uh, look at the TS diagram, you can see that uh, temperature at point 2 is slightly higher than temperature at point 1. So, ideally let us uh, here draw. So, basically this is the constant pressure line and this is the another compressor line. So, this is point 1, this is point 2. So, you can understand the temperature at point 2 is greater than temperature at point 1. The, the state at 1 is saturated liquid that is again incompressible. So, we are taking, we are pumping. So, we are pressurizing that liquid to increase its pressure. So, to develop pressure, but this is incompressible. So, you know rate of you know volumetric dilation is 0, we cannot compress it. Even then temperature is increasing because it is because of the viscous effect, viscous dissipation. So, this is not a heat interacting device, this is a work interacting device and that too the process which I have tried to rather we have seen this process is isentropic process you can see from this TS plane that is reversible adiabatic process. So, long as the process is reversible, entropy generation is equal, equal to 0 and the process is not interacting with the surrounding in terms of heat. So, when water is taken to the pump and by receiving energy in terms of work, it you know uh, its pressure is increased, but it is not interacting with the surroundings in terms of heat. Even then we can see a slight increase in temperature that is because of this viscous heating. So, find that we got. So, basically we can calculate that work pump that equal to V 1 into P 2 minus P 1. So, this is V d P, it is not P d V. So, again let me discuss something that whether the process is reversible adiabatic or the process is reversible isothermal. So, long as the process is steady, slow, steady state steady flow process irrespective of the process the work done expression is V d p minus V d p that we have you know discussed. So, if we try to calculate it, uh, it is not a P d p work. So, for any process be it a reversible adiabatic, be it a reversible isothermal the steady state steady flow work done is minus V d p. So, this is uh, if we try to calculate 15.14 kilo joule, 15.14 kilo joule per kg, because we are trying to calculate quantities per unit mass flow rate, mass flow rate of the working substance. So, that we have calculated. So, knowing now from this data, we can calculate H 2 equal to H 1 plus W pump. So, that is we will be getting 191.81 plus 150 15.14 kilo joule per kg. So, this is 
टू जीरो सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन फाइव के किलो जूल पर के जी फाइन एज आई टोल्ड यू दैट अगेन इफ आई इफ यू अप्लाई स्टेडी स्टेट स्टेडी फ्लो इक्वेशन टू सेवरल प्रोसेसेस एंड आई मीन हुई आर गेटिंग एग्जीक्यूटेड इन डिफरेंट डिवाइसेस विल बी गेटिंग एनर्जी इंट्रैक्शन whether it is work interaction or heat interaction in terms of the enthalpies so we have calculated enthalpy at state point 2 we have calculated enthalpy at state point 1 so essentially if we can calculate enthalpy at several state points then we everything we can calculate fine so next target should be to calculate enthalpy at state point 3 state point 4 5 and 6 so now coming to state point 3 state point 3 so this point is t3 is given 500 degree celsius p3 is given 15 mega pascal see again we can we can find it from stream table that at that pressure what is tg if tg corresponding to 15 mega pascal is less than t3 then definitely t3 will be in the superheated region so basically tg at 15 mega pascal we have to calculate from steam table if we find that tg at 15 mega pascal is equal to t3 what is given then that point will lie on the saturated vapor line but if t3 is greater than tg then point 3 will be on the will be in the superheated regime okay so now if it is in the superheated region why i am telling this is very intuitive but i am telling because if we you know know that the point 3 is in the superheated region by looking at the superheated steam table at that pressure we can calculate enthalpy and that we will be getting 3310 Point eight kilo joule per kg, and also we have to calculate entropy, and that is six point three four eight zero kilo joule per kg Kelvin. If you look at steam table, you will find Tg at fifteen MPa is less than T three. It implies T3, the point 3 is in the superheated region, and T3 you can calculate by looking at the superheated steam table. So not only uh, I mean uh, H3 and S3 you can calculate uh, from the superheated steam table. So I am writing from superheated table. okay so we have also calculated s3 now why we need to you know take the information about entropy at that point if we go back to the previous slide you can see that process 3 to 4 this process is isentropic process now question is we need to calculate enthalpy at all points so we have calculated enthalpy at point 3 we have to calculate enthalpy at state point 4 what we know we know p4 because this expansion process takes place up to an intermediate pressure that is 2.15 mega pascal so this 4 and 5 since these two points these two points are on the same pressure line naturally p4 equal to p5 equal to 1 2.15 mega pascal 
what we have seen from the state postulate because if we try to you know place this particular state point in TS plane we also need to know another important intensive independent properties. So, now we have calculated entropy at state point 3 from the process that we have mapped in TS plane the process 3 to 4 is isentropic process. So, S 4 also will be equal to S 3 we know already P 4. So, we know P 4 from the process we can see that S 4 will be equal to S 3. So, we can easily get S 4 as well. So, knowing S 4 and P 4 we can calculate H 4 by knowing only P 4 we cannot calculate H 4. Okay. So, what we can do? So, let us go to uh, state point 4. So, let us write process 3 to 4 is an isentropic process and S 4 will be equal to S 3 and that is that is 6.3480 kilo joule per kg kelvin right and p4 equal to given that is 2.15 mega pascal now let me tell you one important point what we can do next we know the pressure so again we can go to the superheated table initially what i what we can do we can go to the saturated water pressure table right by looking at the saturated water pressure table at that pressure if we try to find out what is sg so i am telling you the procedure steps so basically at this pressure if we try to find out what is sg that is entropy of the saturated vapor if we find that the entropy S 4 is greater than S G, there is no doubt that point 4 will be in the superheated regime. Let me tell you once again, see we have drawn it. In fact, I have drawn it without knowing whether point 4 will be in the superheated regime or point 4 will lie on the saturated vapor line. We had no clue before to place this particular state point in TS plane, but now time has come by how because we know pressure. So, at that pressure if we try to find out the saturated entropy from the steam table even by looking at the saturated water steam table if we calculate what is S g and if this S 4 is higher than S g then we can ascertain that point 4 should be in the superheated regime. So, step is to check S g at 2.15 mega Pascal. If S 4 is greater than S g then point 4 will be in the superheated regime. Right? It is seen because I have you know drawn it correctly. So, S 4 is greater than S g and this is in the superheated Reason. Okay. Now, you know that if we know S 4 then we also can calculate H 4 and this H 4 is uh, 2817.3 kilo joule per kg. So, this is H 4. Let me tell you one important another impo another one important point. If 
the case is like this point 4 is on the saturated line then H 4 should be H g corresponding to that pressure. Since point 4 is in the superheated regime, we can directly calculate it from the superheated table. A case may be when point 4 will be inside the vapor dome, because it all depends on the designer who is designing the turbine, depending on the requirement of the system. So, if point 4 lies inside the vapor dome, then how can we calculate enthalpy at that point. So, if we know that point 4 is inside the vapor dome, then I am telling you one case if point 4 is inside the dome. then S 4 will be equal to S f plus X 4 S f g and in that case you know the total entropy at point 4 because you got it from S 3 S f and S f g that you need to calculate the pressure at which the point 4 is defined. So, this is at 2.15 mega Pascal this is at the 2.15 in fact, I should not write 2.15 mega Pascal, I will write at P 4 at P 4. So, this is basically I am discussing if the case is like this, right. If the case is like this, we have to calculate quality first at state point 4 once we calculate quality at state point 4, we can then go to calculate enthalpy H 4 will be equal to H f at P 4 plus X 4 into H f g. Now, we have already calculated X 4. So, this is the way by which we can calculate by how we can calculate uh, the enthalpy at state point 4. The common sense is you know this uh, if we allow expansion rather if you continue expansion in the first stage or high pressure stage turbine up to that point which is 4 and if point 4 is inside the vapor dome then you know that uh, again there will be some uh, phase change heat transfer then again it would be heated uh, uh, in the superheated regime. So, it is not advisable to design in such a way that point 4 would be inside the vapor dome. You may think why from the you know thermal uh, from the of course, thermal efficiency from the consideration of the thermal efficiency of the plant. So, I am telling the best design would be not to allow expansion in the high pressure stress turbine to go up to 4 and 4 should be inside the vapor dome. Okay. So, we have calculated you know H 4. So, if I mark H 4 this is also calculated H 3 we have also called calculated. So, we have calculated enthalpy up to state point 4. Next is H 5, H 5 you know it is again important. So, if we go to state point state point 5. So, you know P 4 equal to P 5 equal to 2.15 mega Pascal. Okay. So, this is given. Now, what I was talking about few minutes back that only one property is not good enough to give you another properties from steam table until and unless you know at least another one property. So, what we need is another one property. So, we need to go back to the problem statement. You know that this is given. So, that means, 
steam is taken back to the boiler and it is reheated again up to the initial superheat temperature that is T 3. So, that means, T 5 T 5 equal to T 3 equal to 500 degree Celsius. Now, again you can look at superheated table what we can do? We can find out the uh, temperature at this pressure what is T g. If T g is less than this T 5 then 0 0.5 will be in the superheated region. So, from the superheated table let me write the you know a value. So, basically P 5 H 5 is 3466.61 kilo joule per kg. So, what we can do at that pressure we can find out what is T g and from knowing T g rather knowing T g we can see if T g is less than T 5 then definitely H 5 I mean 0 0.5 will be in the superheated region and we can go to the superheated table to calculate H 5. So, ideally we also have calculated H 5 next is H 6. So, state point 6 and you know that state point 6 is process 5 to 6 is an isentropic process. So, what we can do here we, we also can calculate what will be S, S 5, because S 6 should be equal to S 5 right and S 6 equal to S 5 that we can calculate. Uh, there are so there are two ways what we can do we can calculate S 5 we can by calculating S 5 we also can calculate S 6 because that S 6 it will be equal to S 5. Now, if we go to the T s plane we can see the point 6 is inside the vapor dome. So, that S 6 will be equal to S f plus X 6 into S f g. S f and S f g that we know from because that we can calculate it calculate because we know the condenser pressure 10 kilo Pascal right that way you can do. So, let me write now that equal to S 5 plus X 6 into S F G and that is at 10 kilo Pascal right. So, we can calculate S 5 from the steam table since the process is isentropic process S 6 should be equal to S 5 and S 6 is nothing but S F at 10 kilo Pascal equal to X 6 into S F G and if we calculate that S should be equal to S 6 equal to 0 0.6492 plus X 6 into 7.4996 and this S 6 equal to 7.3988 right. From there we can calculate x 6 equal to 0 0.9 right. So, this is 7.3998 kilo joule per kg Kelvin right. So, this will come here ok. Now, since we have calculated x 6 we also can calculate what would be the H 6. So, H 6 will be equal to H 1 at 10 kilo Pascal plus X 6 into H F G 
at 10 kilo Pascal. And if we plug in the value that is 191.81 that we have calculated very in the beginning, because when we have calculated pump work, we have calculated that is 191.81. So, let me write here and this is 0 0.9 into this is you know uh, 2392.1. So, this quantity is kilojoule per kg. It is very important to mention here that always you should write the unit of all these quantities. So, this is uh, coming as 2344.7 kilojoule per kg. So, finally, we have also calculated A6. So, no calculating enthalpy at every state point next what we can do we can easily calculate the rate of heat supply. So, rate of heat supply if we calculate per unit mass flow rate of the working substance that is what we have considered in this analysis we can calculate S 3 minus H 2 plus H 5 minus H 4. Why? So, if we go back here, so we are supplying H 3 minus H 2 initially and again steam is entering at state point 4 and leaving at state point 5. So, H 4 H 3 minus H 2 plus H 4 minus H 5 H 5 minus H 4. So, the amount of heat that should be added to the boiler is equal to S 3 minus H 2 plus the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of steam when it comes from high pressure stress turbine and goes to the low pressure stress turbine that is H 5 minus H 4. So, uh, if we calculate here and then we will be getting that is uh, I mean we can uh, we know that S 3 equal to 3310.8 H3 minus H2 is 206.95 plus H5 H5 3466.161 minus 2817.2 that is the so, this is the unit should be unit should be kilo joule per kg. Okay. So, this is per unit mass flow rate of the working substance that is rate of heat supply. So, this is one part and another part is thermal efficiency. So, that is 1 minus q out divided by q in. Okay. So, this is you know this is q in. So, this is q in and what about q out? q out equal to h 6 minus h 1. So, if we go back to the previous slide. So, H 6 minus H 1 that is the Q out from the condenser. Okay. So, this quantity is coming as this quantity is coming as 2344.7 minus 191.81. So, this is again kilo joule per kg. If we try to plug in the value of Q in and Q out in this expression, we are getting efficiency equal to 0 0.428. So, that means, efficiency is 42.8 percent. So, if we try to summarize, we have seen that in this problem, we need to calculate the heat input and the thermal efficiency, but to calculate thermal efficiency, we also had to calculate heat output. So, what we did in addition to 
the heat input, we also had to calculate heat rejection from the system and calculating these two quantities, we have quantified the thermal efficiency and it is coming as 42.8 percent. So, if we try to summarize, we have taken this example, we have discussed several issues while solving the problem and finally, I would like to discuss one important point that you know the efficiency is 42.8 percent that is even not 50 percent. So, ideally efficiency should be uh, higher, but what we can see from this calculation is that though we have taken I mean even though we have calculated efficiency is equal to 42.8 percent, but let me tell you we have taken a few assumptions like isentropic process, but in reality it is very difficult to achieve these processes in practice. What, what will happen? All these processes will invite thermodynamic irreversibility and thermodynamic irreversibility will disallow the system to run at the exergetic best exergetic efficiency. So, that means, efficiency will be even less in real life in real practice. Why this why this is happening? So, that means, to run the system though we, are, though we need to supply energy in the form of heat, but the work output that we are getting is less and it is because of this reason we have seen that heat is termed as low grade energy while work is termed as the high grade energy in thermodynamics. And second point is that the amount of heat that we have added, the amount of energy that we have added to the system in the form of heat, a part of that is converted to the useful work. Remaining energy is getting lost from the system to the surroundings. We need to do it, otherwise we would not be able to run the system in a cyclic manner and that is what is the restriction imposed by the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, so, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.